रेस्ट्रिक्टिव लंग डिजीजेस विथ फिजियोथेरापूटिक मैनेजमेंट द लंग डिजीजेस कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू टू टाइप्स ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव एंड रेस्ट्रिक्टिव इन ऑब्स्ट्रक्टिव द पेशेंट कैन नॉट गेट द एयर आउट इट इंक्लूड्स आस्थमा क्रॉनिक ब्रोंकाइटिस एम्फाइसेमा ब्रोंकियोलाइटिस एक्सेट्रा इन रेस्ट्रिक्टिव द पेशेंट कैन नॉट गेट द एयर इन इट इंक्लूड्स सार्कोइडोसिस सिलिकोसिस पल्मनारी फाइब्रोसिस प्लूरल एफिजियन एक्सेट्रा Now moving forward to the definition of RLD. Restrictive lung diseases are a heterogeneous set of pulmonary disorders defined by restrictive patterns on spirometry. These disorders are characterized by a reduced distensibility of the lungs, compromising lung expansions and in turn reduced lung volumes particularly with reduced total lung capacity. Now looking into the characteristics of RLD. Point 1 cannot get the air in that is restricted from filling the lungs. Point 2 stiffness of the lung parenchyma which prevents the lung from expanding fully. Point 3 vital capacity, inspiratory capacity and total lung volume are reduced. Residual volumes can be reduced or remain normal. Point 4 The common link among these disorders is difficulty in expanding the lung and the reduction in lung volumes. Point 5 The restriction can come from changes in chest wall such as kyphosis and scoliosis etc. Point 6 In a RLD the compliance of the lung is reduced which increases the stiffness of the lung and limits the expansion. Point 7 decreased all lung volumes and capacities point 8 fev1 upon fvc ratio normal or increased point 9 severity is determined by the tlc note the lower the tlc the more severe is the restriction now moving towards common clinical features of rld this includes cough breathlessness pain in chest consolidations are seen as opaque of the lung shown in the radiographs on auscultation bronchial breathing can be heard with wheezing sounds lethargy cyanosis absence of breath sounds at the apex of the affected side of the lungs moving forwards types with causes are there are mainly two types extrinsic and intrinsic in extrinsic problem in chest wall neuromuscular diaphragm and pleura intrinsic problems within the lungs diffuse could be interstitial or alveolar now after clearing two basic types of rld now we will look into extrinsic rld types it includes first chest wall the deformity includes kyphosis lordosis scoliosis kyphoscoliosis ankylosing spondylitis obesity pectus carinatum pectus excavatum rib fractures flail chest sternal fractures moving forward respiratory centers problem that is trauma brain stem diseases drugs then followed by diaphragm diaphragmatic paralysis is also a type now the pleura it includes pleural empyema pleural thickening chronic pleurisy abdomen ascites splenomegaly hepatomegaly neuromuscular disorders like myasthenia gravis lms als polio generally lower motor neuron type gbs myotonic dystrophy phrenic nerve injury hypokalemia hypophosphatemia botulism after completing extrinsic we will look into intrinsic rld types These have basic two types that is interstitial lung diseases and non interstitial lung diseases. We will first look into type 1 that is diffuse parenchymal lung diseases or interstitial lung diseases or ILD. So it includes the first point that is occupational and environmental ILD. In this we have a sub type 
that is point 1 hypersensitivity pneumonitis in this the problems are farmer's lung bird fancier's lung chemical worker's lung miller's lung point 2 organic dust induces ild that is basinosis this occurs to the cotton field workers number 3 inorganic dust induces ild cwo asbestosis silicosis berylliosis berylliosis refers to the workers who work in coal fields now point 3 the idiopathic interstitial pneumonia it includes idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis that is ipf cryptogenic organizing pneumonia that is cop bronchitis obliterans bo which includes radiation and chemo others include sarcoidosis rheumatological lch lam vasculitides gwp and egwp eosinophilic interstitial lung diseases that is abba and eosinophilic pneumonia now the second type is non interstitial diffuse lung diseases which include two types that is alveolar proteinosis and anti gbm we can see the difference between normal lung and the lung with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis through this image now moving towards the major part of rld that is difference between intrinsic and extrinsic so it is the tally for difference between extrinsic and intrinsic rlds so in first point we have problems in extrinsic it is it's not the lungs fault and in intrinsic it's the lungs fault example for the example of extrinsic we can have chest wall deformity and for intrinsic we can have pulmonary fibrosis the vital capacity in extrinsic it is low in intrinsic it is also low the total lung capacity in extrinsic is low and as well as in intrinsic the fev1 value in extrinsic and intrinsic both is low the ratio between fev1 upon fvc in extrinsic it remains normal or high and also in intrinsic the reserve volume in both extrinsic and intrinsic is low the partial pressure of oxygen in both the cases that is extrinsic and intrinsic is low as well as for the saturation of oxygen the dlco values for extrinsic is normal and the intrinsic is low flow volume loop higher volumes shifted to left side in extrinsic and lower volumes shifted to right side in intrinsic a upon small a gradient which is normal in extrinsic and widened in intrinsic then moving towards the pathophysiology of rlds point 1 Restrictive lung disease is characterized by reducing lung volumes and therefore reducing lung compliance either due to an intrinsic reason for example a change in the lung parenchyma or due to an extrinsic reason for example disease of the chest wall pleura or respiratory muscles Generally intrinsic causes are from lung parenchyma diseases that cause inflammation of scarring of the lung tissue such as interstitial lung disease or pulmonary fibrosis or from having the alveolar air spaces filled with external materials such as debris or exudates in pneumonitis as some diseases of the lung parenchyma progress the normal lung tissue can be gradually replaced with scar tissue that is interspersed with pockets of air this can lead to parts of the lung having a honeycomb like appearance the extrinsic cause result in lung restriction impaired ventilatory function and even respiratory failure due to the diseases that affect the lung ability to create a change in lung volumes during respiration due to the diseases of the system stated above now the important part is diagnosis how to diagnose rld the diagnostic testing for lung diseases may include any of the following that is pulmonary function test Spirometry is one of the pulmonary function test. Then followed by chest x-rays, CT scans, bronchoscopy, pulse oximetry, etc. Here we can see a patient doing the spirometry for the procedure of pulmonary function test. 
Now moving towards the treatment part. So now we will look into medical treatment. The treatment of lung disease depends on many factors such as the type and stage of disease, family history, patient's medical history and the health and age of the patient. Any of the following may be used for treating lung diseases as mentioned below. Inhalers, expectorants, antibiotics, oxygen therapy. The oxygen therapy is the main treatment for restrictive lung diseases which is supportive oxygen therapy. Oxygen therapy helps people with lung diseases get enough oxygen even when their lungs cannot fully expand. Chemotherapy Chemotherapy may help reduce inflammation caused by a restrictive lung disease. Lung transplantations Lung transplants offer a chance of a healthier, longer life but they are also highly risky. After a lung transplant, a person can develop life-threatening complications such as organ rejection. After a lung transplant, a recipient must take drugs that suppress the immune system. Next, stem cell therapy which is still an experiment treatment. Clinical trials, treatment for restrictive lung disease is continually evolving. Impairment in pulmonary function in patients with severe scoliosis may be controlled with surgical correction. For obese patients, management involves losing weight by a combination of diet and physical exercises. Ventilator Therapy A ventilator is a device that helps the lungs take in oxygen. A ventilator uses a tube in the throat or a high pressure mask to support breathing. For some people, ventilator therapy is unsafe or cannot be used. Hence, in extreme cases, an alternative called extracorporeal membrane oxygenation ECMO, delivers oxygen directly to the blood. For ECMO, a doctor removes blood through a large vein. The blood is pumped through a membrane that provides it with oxygen and it is then put back in the body. Now we will look into the main part of this presentation that is physiotherapeutic management of RLD that is restrictive lung diseases. Physiotherapy program of RLD depends upon these factors. The problems and manifestations of the patient followed by the pathological changes of the disease, the duration and progression of the disease and the associated conditions and complications. The aims of PT management are maintain and restore adequate ventilation, re-expand the affected lung, prevent permanent or recurrent atelectasis, adequate range of motion in upper limb and trunk, prevent deformity and maintain good posture, assist the removal of secretion if present, assist and control drainage by water seal method, maintain adequate peripheral circulations, improve exercise tolerance and endurance, relieve pain and anxiety, help in reducing dyspnea and breathing rate, break down any additions formed. Now we will look into the measures or interventions taken in the course of PT management. Majorly the interventions are divided into some subtypes. So the types are respiratory exercises that are nose training, segmental breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, belt breathing exercises, breathing training with devices. Next, mobilizing exercises which include active free exercises, gymnastic exercises at later stage, swimming, shoulder wheel and raw machine, supported and unsupported exercises. Last but not the least, that is clearing lung fields which include humidification, clapping, shaking and percussions techniques, breathing exercises, postural drainage position to the affected lung area, suctioning, cuff and half techniques, autogenic drainage. This is a picture regarding the postural drainage. Now we should keep some precautions in mind to make the PT management successful. The precautions are those who are unable to walk, those who have unstable angina, people who have had a recent myocardial infection, 
unstable cardiac disease, locomotor issues, difficulties following instruction due to cognitive or psychiatric impairments, presence of any infections or severe viral diseases such as COVID-19. Thank you.